Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and you are watching another video about long-term memory in LangGraph. So for those who are still missing the previous video where we took a very short look on short-term memory and long-term memory, I would recommend to go back, stop, pause, make a pause here, stop it and go back and check the previous video. Otherwise, let's continue and just to recap, uh, last time we were talking about short-term memory and long-term memory and I was saying that we have a checkpointers and store as concept from LangGraph to distinguish between different types of memories. And in general, uh, when we are looking at the long-term memory and the way what we were doing, we practically we are talking about semantically memory or keeping facts. So what's happening in the previous lesson, like what you observed already, we have a conversation and this is part of short-term memory. And also we were collecting some facts about a user and practically you can look at that as a profile. So what was happening in our chatbot in the previous session, we, we analyzed the conversation, we took the already existing profile and based on the conversation, we updated the profile, so we kept uh, all, all, all the time updated information about the user. Like, for example, here it's known that this is the name and a software engineer. And then back, uh, based on the conversation, for example, current project, information about current project can be extracted. And again, if you recap the previous uh, session, and this is a screenshot from the previous session, and this is how memory looked like, and you can see that this value thing, it's, it's a row string, so it was a very unstructured memory, which we were posting uh, all the time in our prompts. And practically, this is not the way you want uh, your data to be, uh, because it's not really not convenient to work this data in such form, right? You need to structure it somehow. And so today we are talking about structuring your user profile as an example. And uh, for doing that, uh, what we should do, first let's define a user profile schema and I'm using pedantic library for that. And you, you saw this technique already in previous lessons. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a user profile, we are defining a number of uh, properties which we would like to keep about the user, like such as a name, professional, uh, level of seniority, languages, and this is not about speaking languages, uh, this is about programming languages, right? Then frameworks, probably uh, the current project we might be interested in, uh, what user is currently working on, some user skills and current interests. And again, we are, we, we are using this um, field class from Pedantic, where, which allows us to, dis, uh, to define description of every field. And this, this is going to help the model to uh, better understand what kind of information should be stored here. So we have, this is the user profile, preferred name, uh, profession job title, uh, level of seniority with some possible values. And also we're saying if it's unknown, then you should guess on that based on the profession, and so on and so forth. So we do have this uh, structured user profile, which we would like to reuse now. And again, probably if you recap the previous videos, we were talking about structured outputs. So what's that? Uh, it's pretty simple. We have the model, and then we are using this beautiful feature from LangChain, uh, structured outputs. And we are providing our user profile as a structured uh, as, a, as a structure of the data we would like to see uh, back as an output. And so the rest is pretty simple. We have a structured model which is aware of the the structured output format, and we are saying, okay, hey, how are you? Just as, uh, as an example of a prompt, how are you? I'm Evgeny. I'm a software engineer, and I need your help with my project. And this is something in JavaScript application and. I don't understand how to, to configure security in this project. So that's it, right? And uh, let's invoke it here, see the results and print them just to double check how it works. And so that's the output what we have. See uh, what was possible for the model to extract from this very raw user prompt that the name is here, the professional software engineer. Then the model guessed that, okay, probably it's a mid-level of seniority level and it's definitely Java programming language and Spring Framework is used like Spring Boot here. Then the project name is Task Manager application, that's true. 
And then it's very interesting, just based on the language and the framework, and it's kind of web application most probably. So model guessed a lot of factors like this is Java development, Spring Boot, and RESTful API development. So this three was completely uh, guessed by model. And since I asked uh, how do I uh, configure the security, then my current interest is uh, security configuration Spring Boot, it's pretty clear, right? And we do have this structured output. This is really nice. But one thing here, if you think that this is this, uh, this, this structured output method from LangChain is something like a magical thing from LangChain itself, then you are wrong because uh, I mentioned that already. Also, please check another videos about structured outputs. Uh, this is a very basic thing in LLMs. And the way how it works, I will show you. So practically what's happened uh, when, we, we, when we triggered this invocation, right? In practically, uh, practically, next prompt was generated. So it was a schema generation based on the pedantic model. So you can see this type and property name type and description. This all came from pedantic model definition as a block number one. And number two was extract the user profile from the following message. And my message was practically passed here. And as a result from this prompt, bigger prompt containing of three parts, a proper generated structured output was created. So that's the way how, how it works in very short uh, structure outputs. And again, this is a very basic thing. It has nothing to do with long chain or long graph. It's, uh, it's, it's everywhere in every AI based application. You can meet this thing and okay, now you understand how it works, right? All right, so uh, we have all pieces that we need in place already so we understand how to extract the information from the conversation and uh, we know how to store it and let's try to update our chatbot and as a first step let's create already a profile memory and this profile is only about the name so it contains like Evgeny my name and that's it right we don't have anything so what's happening here, I'm defining a user ID 1 and we have a namespace and the keys profile and the profile itself again contains only the name Evgeny. And we are saving this into the long-term memory that we are going to reuse in our chatbot. And here we are, we have the chatbot. It's exactly the same with minor differences that we had in the previous session, in the previous video. And what's particularly different here, I will show is this our update memory thing. So what's happening here? We are fetching profile pretty the same as it was before. We are fetching, getting profile content from this object, this structured object. And uh, then we have a system message. So update the user profile using the user's chat history. And uh, you have to save this for future reference. And if profile exists, then update it. Otherwise, like just create it from scratch. And there is possibility that profile is not here at all. And in this case, for this not late memory, we are using structured model, which is aware of user profile object we created previously, right? So what's happening next? We are passing our system message and the whole conversation that happened before that. And as a result, we are saving uh, the updated profile. We have a namespace, we have a key, and uh, we are just uh, saving this as a Python dictionary. And the rest is the same. We are building graph. We have a checkpoint of short-term memory and we have a storage as a long-term memory. So let me apply it. It's exactly the same thing as previously, right? We have a chat node, then we update the memory based on that, then the route finished. And the next time chat can reuse the memory that was updated in the previous uh, step. And before we run it, let's check the long-term memory, what we have there, just to be sure what's, uh, that everything is correct. And you see, we have only the name of Gen is clear. That's it, right? This is the only thing we know about the user at the moment. And all right, let's ask a question. So we're defining a thread, uh, the same user ID as here. And our question would be next. I'm saying like, hey, I'm a junior software engineer. And I need your help with my project. And this is a task, uh, task manager Java Spring Boot application. So let's run it and then check what information uh, was extracted from this, right? And take a look. Uh, first of all, it knows my name already. So it says, hi, Evgeny. And practically that's it. It says, okay, I would be happy to help you with your task manager Java Spring application. What specific challenges you're facing? So pretty logical answer, right? And if you check what memory contains right now, 
Take a look at that. We do have a lot of information already. So what's there? Name was there already. Profession now it's clear. Software engineer. And I'm a junior software engineer, so my level of seniority junior. And uh, the language I'm working at the moment is Java and Spring Boot framework. And current project is task Java Spring Boot application. And skills is not clear and current in interests also is not clear. So it's time to ask the second question. And uh, I'm in another thread, which means there, there are no information stored uh, from the previous conversation. So it's another new thread and the same user ID, number one. Without having a context, anyway, I'm trying to continue the conversation. So I'm asking, I do not get how to set up security configuration. And I'm running it again. And take a look at that. It says, okay, hi, Genie. I would be happy to help you with this setting up security configuration for your task manager Java Spring Boot application. And to get started, you'll typically want to use Spring Security. And here's the basic, so it's pretty basic explanation, right? And you know why? Because I will explain you because I'm a junior and if I scroll up to our chatbot, I forgot to mention all that, but uh, it says that your answers, chatbot answers, should be related to the level of seniority of the users. You know, uh, if, if the seniority level is known, right? So the chatbot was clever enough even to simplify, kind of uh, make it a bit uh, for me to, to better understand the information. All right, and there are some ways how to do things in Spring Security. We're interested in that. And last check, let's check, uh, let's see what uh, what's the memory contains, long-term memory, after the second round of conversation. And take a look at that. Uh, we have a new field, current interest. It was filled like the rest is the same, but now uh, Chatbot is aware that setting up security configuration in Spring Boot is topic of my interest. All right, that's it for today. Again, we talked about semantic memory or keeping facts, and uh, I showed you how to do a structured, uh, how to keep a structured way facts about user. Anyway, thanks a lot for sticking with me till the end, and well, we will see each other in the next video about LangGraph introduction. See you and bye bye.